everything. All right, guys, we are back in Code Academy. We are doing introduction to JavaScript, and we are on the functions and scope section, functions. So let's go ahead and jump right in. What is a function? If you're not familiar with a, what a function is, it's basically a reusable piece of code. So if we wanted to console.log, hello, my name is John, we could save it in a function and then just call that function whenever we would need it to work. So it says go ahead and copy and paste this into here. So here's our function. We denote it, say hello, then the brackets, and then the code within it. And then we can go ahead and call that function. Oops, sorry guys, one second. We can go ahead and call that function by simply calling say hello. My desk is a bit of a mess right now. Alright, uh so we call the function name in the function let's go ahead and make a new function so we're going to create a function called make pizza and within its scope here or within it within it we're going to console.log some stuff what is it that we're going to be logging it's going to be pizza pizza and again remember that we're going to be using the forward slash Pizza's done. Let's let's eat. And then we want to go ahead to call that function so that it runs. Because if you write a function like this, it's not going to actually do anything until we call it. Now that we've called it, you'll see up here that it's running just fine. So you can also add parameters, as you'll see right here. Now, a parameter is basically information that you're going to pass into that function so that the function can run uh, correctly. You'll see right here, it's passing in a first name parameter, which you can put into it when you call the function and then it'll output a more dynamic um, dynamic thing because it's taking in items and doing stuff with that so in our example here we're gonna add a parameter called topping topping will be inherited from the function call so that we'll know what top what to do with it and then we can go ahead and just add plus topping here and then um, we'll say extra cheese got to run that and you'll see right here pizza's done let's eat extra cheese so now it's more dynamic because we're passing in a parameter that we'll use within the function So you can pass in multiple multiple parameters and of different types. To pass in a second parameter, we would just put a comma and then we would name that parameter. In this example, it's going to be crust type. And as we all know, the best crust is the stuffed crust. So that is exactly what we're going to put in here. Uh, it's about the only thing that's good for Pizza Hut. Um, God, hashtag no Pizza Hut sponsorships, I suppose. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and add this in here as well. We can go ahead and put crust type. So let's eat extra cheese stuffed crust. Granted, this doesn't look very nice, but it's, sh it's more so showcasing that everything is working as it should. interesting maybe they wanted it a certain way let's see if this fixes it 
I'm not sure why it, it's not working. Let's go ahead and do that. I think I think I just want it to display a, a certain way. This looks better. There we go. Um, I think they wanted us to have multiple strings in between everything. That's all. Um, as long as you understand the the fact that you can add in multiple parameters to these functions, that's really what you need to get away from this lesson. Again, it's just data that we're passing in when we make the call and then doing something with that data. You can also in you also create a variable that will store the value of a function that you can use that variable later on. So instead of console.logging this, we're going to create a variable called, so we're going to say var uh, make pizza is equal to a function. Now we are going to go ahead and get rid of this name. And instead, what we want to do is we want to return this. And because it's a variable, we need to close it like so. And then setting it to equal to function, take two parameters, top being a crest type, instead of replace with a return statement. gonna run this real quick make sure we're we're doing everything correctly so basically we're creating a variable that's storing a function in it and then we're gonna do something with the data that's within that variable on the next line outside of the function create a variable called custom pizza so we're gonna create a variable here called custom pizza and we're gonna set it equal to a function call of make pizza so because it's a function we're going to denote it right here uh, even though it's a variable storing a function we still do this to call it and then we want to pass in parameters again so topping we will put this time um, ham and this time uh, thin thin and now when we go ahead and run this make pizza although i think we may have to console.log this out if we want to see the value oh yeah just making sure we're getting everything going here this is really going absolutely slow so we're taking a variable that's storing all that's storing this string now with the parameters that we've provided and now we're going to just go ahead and console.log out because we're as of right now, all we're returning is a string. We're not actually returning any output. So now when we run this, you'll see that we get our output. This thing crust pizza with ham, done, let's eat. Now there's a variety of reasons why you might do this. Um, you may just need the data so that you can can store it in something. It may be easier to handle that way. It really just depends. Um, it's a little bit of preference as well. But that is functions. Um, what did we learn in this? We learned what a function is. Function is basically something that stores some code that you can reuse. You can also functions also take in parameters, which is data that you'll use within the function. And then we learned uh, that we can store a very store a function in a variable and then do some stuff with that as well. And then we also learned that you can return data in a function instead of just running the code. So oftentimes you'll create functions that maybe just need to get a number to be used in another function so you would return that data. And you can use the return like this and you can use it in a traditional function as well. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and support me on Patreon. It's appreciated a ton. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Definitely check them out at devmountain.com. If you're looking for a boot camp that's in front-end development, iOS, or UX, go ahead and give them a shot. Tuition includes housing, so you can get up and go and fully immerse yourself in the program. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.